Hi guys. You might have noticed that my face looks like I've just come out of a VR session, and that's because I have. Effectively, I haven't had much time to sort out this video, so I'm having to do it straight after racing. In this episode, we're going to be looking through some settings for iRacing using Steam VR. iRacing is pretty good out of the box, but these settings help with the level of immersion that you might get from the game. To keep things beginner friendly, I'm not messing around with any ini files. I'm just keeping it simple. We're going through Steam VR and iRacing itself. I'll give you guys a link to a great resource for setting up iRacing and VR, and that will help you to go the extra mile if you indeed want to start modifying ini files. Auto configuration is a great starting point for eye racing and in particular when you're using flat screens however it falls a little bit short on immersion for using vr it sacrifices some immersion settings that we might want to keep and favors some other settings which actually tanks our frame rate so let's try and set up something that is bespoke for vr so first up if you're not familiar with modifying eye racing settings you can't do it from its user interface you have to actually go into a game session say a test drive or a practice session and from there you can load up the options once you're in a sim session load up the options screen and then click graphic in the graphics section i run windowed i don't think it matters too much but that is essentially just going to be your display for your flat screen which is a mirror of what you're seeing in vr what does matter, however, is enabling the SPS setting, which is effectively single pass stereo for running VR. You've got two screens and you want to do it in a single pass. With that enabled, these are the performance settings I use. I have the cloud and sky in low detail. It's not a high priority in VR. However, car detail is high priority, so make sure that it's high detail settings. Pit objects, we kind of go middle of the road with mid settings. Events, grandstands and crowd, we have low. Objects, we run in high. Particles, we run medium, but we have them in high res. Max cars, we have at 40 with draw settings 20 and 8 in brackets. And then we have min pits. Dynamic lot, we leave as world only and car only. Frame rate, we don't limit at all. And we leave max pre-rendered frames as one. Anisotropic filtering we have at 16 times. And then we have AA at two. We enable both render dynamic track data and dynamic tire data. Shadow maps we set to track and cars only with dynamic objects enabled and filtering ticked. This allows us to have shadows in the car so we can see, for example, our race number being reflected in the shadow. Filtering just gives us a slightly less jaggy experience when we have our in-car shadows. We disable night shadow maps. However, I leave walls and headlights enabled. We have our number of lights as one and we don't filter those lights. Dynamic and fixed cube maps, we leave at zero. And we want the pretties, so shader quality is ultra. In VR, we leave our arms enabled so we can see them in VR. We disable two pass trees. We don't need that expense. And we don't use low quality trees. We have our cockpit mirrors set to two, but we disable high detail in the mirrors. We have our headlights at low and we disable headlights on track in mirrors. For our virtual mirror, if we have that enabled, we have the fourth of that is 75. We disable heat haze, FXAA and distortion, enabling sharpening and HDL. Unless you're running a graphics card with very low memory, then you can also disable the video memory swap. We enable the 2048 car textures and we disable hiding our car number. We have our max video setting at 7 gig for my 10 gig graphics card, and that gives us a little bit of wiggle room for other things that might be running in the background. We then have our max system memory at about half of what our overall system memory might be. I've got 32 gig, I run with 16 iRacing. 
Now, I've just gone through and talked about a lot of different settings here. That's a lot of information to try and get over a video. So I have put that information in the description below for your viewing pleasure. Steam VR settings, we keep it pretty basic. I run with a fault of 97%, a resolution multiplier of 100%, with motion smoothing enabled. And that's pretty much it. Trying this all out in Knockhill. The TCR cars, which are amazing around here, you just throw them around and most of the time they stick. We can see that the frame rate is pretty consistent. The visuals are very good. In fact, I think they're better than what I had before, even though I am getting a smoother frame rate than what I had before. I didn't really notice any frame drop even in the start of a race. And putting your pit settings to minimum really helps there, because otherwise if there are cars in the pit lane you get a frame drop to every time you pass the pits. You don't have that problem with those down as min, or at least I haven't experienced that issue. So overall, very happy with how these settings have helped us out. I'm looking forward to doing a lot more racing in iRacing now with a more fluid experience. I can't imagine it's going to improve my driving at all, but at least the system will be performing better. So final thoughts time. Even with these settings only being applied within the game and Steam VR, it has made a massive difference to how the game feels when you are racing. Immersion seems to have gone up a notch with the in-car mirrors enabled and the shadow mapping without the aliasing that we were seeing in the default settings. Now I'm sure you can gain a few more frames if you really need them by dropping some of these settings further and with playing around with the ini file. Now I wanted to keep this beginner friendly so I didn't go and deep dive into the ini. There's an amazing resource in the iRacing forums that gives you the lowdown on all the settings for VR and I will link that in the description as well so you can tinker to your heart's content. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope this has improved your VR experience in iRacing. If it has, don't forget to like this video and leave a message in the comments below so I know how you're getting on. As ever, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. The more subscribers I have, the more features that I have unlocked to present to you guys. So with all that said, have fun in iRacing and goodbye for now. Bye bye guys.